Hi there, welcome back to Dukoscopy TV, I'm Ben Jones. South Africa has seen its quarterly GDP growth rate rise dramatically, whereas the overall annual GDP growth rate for 2013 is down from the year before. Joining me on the line to analyse these figures is Annabelle Bishop from Investec. So Annabelle, throughout 2013, the tapering discussion had a strong impact on South Africa and a lot of emerging economies. Now today's year-on-year -year GDP growth rate is lower than last year, so how much did the tapering discussion affect this figure, and is it what you expected? The emerging markets were clearly affected by the announcement that tapering would occur in future in May 2013. We saw a very substantial sell-off in both bonds and equities, and this caused South African rand to depreciate quite substantially as these emerging market asset classes were sold off. The strike action, however, in 2013 had the greatest impact on the GDP growth rate. Indeed, it should be noted that in 2011, South Africa recorded GDP growth of 3.6%, which then dropped down to 2.5% in 2012. And now in 2013, GDP growth has averaged 1.9%. This downward movement in the trend in economic growth in South Africa is mainly as a consequence of work stoppages, due from strike action, obviously insufficient electricity supplies also played a part. It is not essentially a consequence of the impact of tapering of quantitative easing. Instead, that rather hasn't had an impact on the financial markets and in particular the domestic currency. Now, looking at the quarterly GDP growth rate, it shot up to 3.8%, way above last month's 0.7%. With little to no strikes, did it show that South Africa could see substantial growth when the manufacturing sector was operating at normalised levels? I think it's quite important to note that the 3.8% recorded in the fourth quarter of 2013, combined with the 0.7% of the third quarter, was due to the strike action in the latter and the resumption of work in the former. In other words, if you were to average the two, you'd actually get an economic growth rate of close to 2%. This is the underlying trend growth rate in South Africa, 2% growth due to significant weakness in confidence, both in the consumer side and in the private sector business side, also as well because of high levels of indebtedness amongst the consumer and because of a reduced ease of doing business. A rebound in economic growth rate to 3.8% in the fourth quarter was merely because of the low base effect and because work has returned to work. It does not indicate any pickup in underlying economic growth, nor indeed a strengthening in the economic trajectory of the economy. Indeed, 2014 is likely to see in its first quarter weak economic growth, also in the region of 2%, as a consequence of the prevalent strike action in the platinum sector. We're looking at an economic growth rate slightly below this, but I think the range of consensus was from 1.5% to 4.2%. So as an average outcome of 3.4%, the 3.8% is not divergently different. And finally, at the recent G20 meeting, there was a lot of discussion surrounding the effects that monetary policy changes from developed economies can have on emerging markets. The final statement said that central banks will be mindful of impacts when setting their monetary policy. What does this mean for South Africa? What effect could it have? I think being mindful of monetary policy really means to communicate it well and to also explain it and to be as clear as possible about the future trajectory and the types of variables and inputs that it is dependent upon. What this means for South Africa is that if there is a clear measured pace of monetary policy tightening in South Africa, it would be less harmful to our economy than if there was a knee-jerk reaction. In other words, if you have a look at the fact that the United States currently is expected to only start raising interest rates in the latter part of 2015 and potentially to have the Fed funds rate up by 4% by the end of 2018, this then implies a fairly measured trajectory of interest rate increases and that should then be less harmful for South Africa than if we were to follow the far curve in which is currently a 2% hike. So we are not expecting to see substantially higher rapid increases in interest rates in South Africa as a consequence, and we are hoping that the international monetary authorities stick to this clear guidance as it will have benefit for the emerging markets. That's all we've got time for, I'm afraid. Annabel, thank you for joining us today. 
Make sure you stay tuned to Dukascopy TV as we have plenty of updates and exclusive interviews for you. Goodbye.